Hey folks, it's Billy DKY, the truth seeker that simplifies and demystifies. This is going to be Strike Force Miami post fight commentary. We'll start off with the first fight Nick Diaz versus Marius Zaromskis. And basically, I mean, Nick D, all you got to do is say, great job, Nick Diaz. I mean, you know, I thought Nick was out there for a second when he went to the ground and, uh, you know, basically, he basically just took charge of that fight, really. I mean, you got to love his boxing. I mean, here's the beauty of Nick Nick Diaz's boxing. He hits a, he he's what I call 60% punches. You know, he's about 60% of his power. He doesn't really blow his wide. He doesn't gas out. And also, and, and think of the beauty of it, he doesn't break his hand when he's throwing those punches, but he is, he is putting damage, and he's, plus he's not overcommitting himself to be taken down. Where if the other guy's, you know, loading up, then he's going to gas out. So, I mean, it's really, I, I really like his style of boxing. I really do. So, I mean, you got to say hats off to Nick Nick Diaz because that was a hell of a performance. And, uh, oh, I did have one funny thing to say. Nick Diaz, nobody's ever going to accuse Nick Diaz of being a Buddha. You know, they're not staring at him. Man, he's just staring the guy in his head and stuff. It's just crazy. But you got to expect that. He, he's really a pretty solid guy, but it just... You know, he just got a little bit of attitude. Okay, Chris Cyb Cyborg versus Marlos Coonan. Marlos Coonan. Um, okay. I'll, I'm going to start with saying something about the promotion first. I really like the way Strike Force walks, lets people walk into the cage. You know, you put the fans down low and they're up on a, you know, more of a platform walking in. Or in the UFC, you know, have the fans up all around you and they're putting their hands up like this and about ripping their arms off. Where it's down like that, you can sort of tag, touch the, the people's hands without having your arm ripped off. So I do like that. Basically, Chris Cyborg has too much spirit for most women. Basically, going to have to get some women in there with a little bit more, you know, just a little bit more essence, spirit, whatever you want to call it. Because uh, she's just too much of a woman. I mean, it's like having a dude in there fighting. So I'd, I'd really almost like to see her fight Mike Brown or uh, Uriah Favor. I think that would be a good fight. <laughs> But you gotta say hats off to the Sukunin uh, <clears throat> because she came in there and she gave a really good fight. But I mean, I don't know if you noticed that for the fight, man. She was black and blue. That's that looks like a rough night of domestic violence here. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> Herschel Walker versus Greg Nudge. I don't know why the hell his name is Nudge. It's N A G Y. Anyway. Anyway. This, I mean, it's a good fight for Herschel Walker. His first time, he's 47. You know, I was really impressed with... Uh, I was I was really impressed with how well-rounded Herschel Walker was, except for that little grandpa walk he kept doing. I didn't really like that, but... I mean, maybe there's something to that that I don't know, but... Uh, he really needs some stiffer competition. Now, like I said, that was good for the debut, and I was really impressed with how well-rounded he was and able to handle himself, so... But uh, I think he's going to have some serious trouble when he gets in there with some bigger boys, the people that are, you know, really top-rated guys. But it, it was good to see him in there, especially at 47. <clears throat> okay, next fight. Robbie Lawler versus Melvin Manoff. I'll tell you what, Melvin looked just sick in that first round with Robbie. I mean, Robbie was getting beat down. And I was like, man, it's only a matter of time. And, and then he, uh, then all of a sudden, out of nowhere... Boom! Overhand right. Man, he just knocked the dude out clean in one shot. I was like, damn. Mm. Okay. You know what? And I really sort of think he set that up. Because the way he's talking after the fight, he's like, yeah, we knew he dropped his hands once he felt like he got hurt. And, you know, Robbie tried to fake like he was hurt that one time, which I really don't believe he was hurt. I think he was, you know, basically playing possum and trying to get him to rush in. But he didn't, he didn't fall for it. It didn't look real, so... You know, that was that was really a good fight, and it's pretty impressive on, uh... It's impressive both ways, really. I mean, Melvin Manhoff, man, that, that dude's for real, and he's striking, and, you know, Robbie's for real, too, so... But I don't know if you noticed how bad Robbie was limping after that. I, I bet he got his leg broke, because he was getting kicked hard. Okay. Okay. That's all I had to say on that. Bobby Lashley versus Weston. That, this was really... I can sum this up in one word. Puh. Pathetic. I mean, man. West Kent, West Sims comes in there and takes his shirt off. I'm like, man, this guy didn't even... I mean, I agree he had one week to train, but... 
Yeah, I mean, what they should have done, you know, if you don't have an opponent for this guy, you ought to have at least four or five guys lined up and say, look, all of you need to be training because you might be fighting come January 30th. So, uh, heck, give them, give them some money to be training. Say, here, you all got ten grand. You All of you need to be training. And uh, So, and I, I really don't think Bobby Lashley is going to be a force to be reckoned with in, in the heavyweight division for one simple reason. He really doesn't look like a fighter. He looks more like a bodybuilder and... I, from what from my experience is a lot of ex, excess baggage is not going to help you in that ring. So I, mean, I think the excess muscle is actually going to be a detriment to him. And you really don't see a lot of top guys look like bodybuilders. And I, I'm trying to think of one guy that's a bodybuilder looking type that's that's in there. And I, I can't think of one really right off the top. That was sort of back in the day. You know, it looks good, but it ain't, it ain't necessarily going to translate into fighting. So, okay. I, like I said, I don't think this fight should have even happened at all. Uh, he really, and plus the next fight, he really needs to be in there with somebody that can fight and is prepared, you know, and has it lined out for him because it, it really wasn't. It, it, I didn't like it at all, really. That that they keep having fights like that that'll hurt their promotion. So let's see if I have anything else. We got a few minutes here. Like I say, great job, Nick Diaz. I mean, that was really good performance. Like I said, I love his boxing. Chris Cyborg, I mean, I don't know, man. We need to get some other women in there. Get, get some women with a little more spirit. I think it really basically said all I want to say. It, all in all, it wasn't bad. I mean, it was, it was worth watching. And, uh, you know, it was, it was good. And So anyway, until next time, later, folks.